Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Lightning Web Component Session. We are excited to share our segment of Dreamforce 2023's What's New and Coming in the World of Lightning Web Components. My name is Alice O, oh, Director of Product at Salesforce. Hi, everyone. I'm Alicia Thio, Product Manager at Salesforce. Hello, everyone. I'm Leo Balter, Product Manager at Salesforce. Before we get started, just a quick reminder that Salesforce is a publicly traded company and you should make all your purchasing decisions based on generally available features. Now let's get started. For the next few minutes we will have with you, we will highlight some of the most exciting features that are coming to LWCs, along with many of them laid on the roadmap in the coming year. Now let's start with Dynamic Component. First and foremost, we are very excited to bring Dynamic Components, a much loved and one of the top most requested features to LWC. Coming to general availability in Winter 24, you will now be able to create and dynamically instantiate components across namespace at runtime. For example, if you have a lightning page and want to show another component in a different namespace when your end user click on a dropdown, or if you want to show a different experience based on a variety of states like user permissions, actions, or work preps, you can do that with dynamic components. This is a powerful capability because it allows you to create highly customizable and reusable templates. You can build one component that queries the data that you need and package that up, and you can have another separate view component to control the UI UX and how they get rendered. Let's see how you could set this up. In this example, we have a page that dynamically renders a component based on the tab that's clicked. If we wanted to implement this in today's world, you would have had to create some conditional logic in the HTML template, like shown in the example. The issue with this approach is that it doesn't scale as well. In, the, in this example, there are only a few conditions, but what happens when the number of components and conditions grows? As you add more complex conditions, managing these logic can become very difficult. Here's where the dynamic components comes in. Here's an example of how you can use dynamic components to solve this problem. As you can see, we've replaced all the conditional logic with a single dynamic component according to the same tabs with a much simpler code. Inspecting the page, you can see that content has been inserted with the correct tag. LWC dynamic components is comprised of two parts. First is the LWC ele component element, which is a special LWC managed element that tells the LWC engine where the component will be inserted into the DOM. The second is the LWC is directive, which tells the engine what elements to render and points to a lightning element constructor. If no value is provided to this directive, nothing will be rendered. To retrieve the lightning elements constructor, Simply import the constructor in your JavaScript code and assign it to the variable used by the directive. This is a basic example, but you can also extend dynamic components feature to manage different pop-ups in one component element or lazy load components using dynamic imports. This can also be a powerful tool if you're an ISC partner and you're looking to create managed packages because it means that you can create an app once keep the same backend, and for each other customer, you can configure a different customized UI, then sell it to your customers. Now let's talk about third-party web component. Moving on to our next feature announcement is another popular feature request we heard from you all, which is support for bringing third-party web components in LWC. Many of you may have custom elements that were built not using LWC that were built outside of the Salesforce platform that you're using on other apps. With third-party web component support, you can now reference these non-Salesforce UI components from your LWC template and bring them into Salesforce platform without having to rewrite them in LWC. We understand that you, our customers, rarely use a single platform to power your digital experience. And we want to make sure it's easy for you to bring your existing web components as they are and integrate them seamlessly into the Salesforce platform so that your LWCs and other components can work together without needing to rewrite them. Let's say you have a collection of UI components that are not based in LWC framework that you want to use in your Salesforce application, 
like this emoji picker library. You can use this third-party web component by either uploading the third-party web component as a static resource, then uploading the component using the load script method from the platform resource loader module and adding the custom element to your template using the LWC external directive. Or you can add the third-party web component as an LWC module with the JS meta XML config file. These third-party web components would render as a native web component in your LWC template and require you to have a Lightning Web Security enabled in the org. We are excited to bring this awesome feature to general availability to you in Spring 24 so that you can have increased productivity and flexibility by bringing your own web components using other technologies to the Salesforce platform. Thank you, Alice, for the illuminating overview of dynamic components and third-party web components. And a huge shout out uh, to all of you You've created millions of Lightning Web components. It's because your engagement uh, that uh, LWC has now overtaken Aura and as the most widely used component framework. So thank you, everyone. You helped make this possible. Your feedback has been invaluable. From the first State of LWC survey early this year to other channels, we've been listening. While LWC adoption has surged, we understand that there are feature gaps that make some of you hesitant to transition fully from Aura. Today, Alice presented Dynamic Components, and you can see it, it's one of the first uh, feature gaps that we needed to resolve, and I'm now thrilled to dive in into Workspace APIs. It's available as beta for Winter 24 release, and this feature improves you uh, how you manage tabs and sub-tabs in your console apps all within the LWC ecosystem. You no longer need to struggle with Aura's Lightning Workspace API. This new API is all about gi giving you the control you've been asking for, all uh, while maintaining high performance and efficiency. If you, if you can see from my example, I'm just importing some methods from the Lightning Platform Workspace API. This is all LWC now. If we go to the demo, okay, so here I have a broker page. If I click on properties, I am opening a sub tab in my console lab and I can navigate through the tabs. I can refresh them uh, or I can also close my tabs. I can set it as a workspace tab and I click on other ones to create new sub tabs and uh, can open more all using LWC now. This is all great. I can, yeah, can close it. It's fully functional and no longer I need to use Aura for it. So if I go on the next uh, slide, I have a small example of how this works. I'm using the methods that I imported. I use uh, open sub tab. And if I go to a code example, here on Visual Studio Code, I'm importing the methods uh, from the Lightning Platform Workspace API. After I import them, if I go scroll down, um, I have a wire um, for enclosing tab ID uh, to match the, uh, the current tab ID. And I also have a handle select that will uh, open the sub tabs for me as I when I click the properties, and it uh, it works like this in LWC. So if we go next, let's talk about the template expressions, where we push the boundaries of what's possible in LWC. So have you heard of LWC template expressions? It's all about writing ECMAScript compliant syntax directly into your LWC templates, which means less jumping between your template and JavaScript class. You will experience more efficient code, a better developer experience, and easier maintenance. Take a look at this animated demo. So I have a single error function just working directly in my HTML template. So when I change my element, I just use my input directly and I just change it there without going to my LWC class. So how this actually works. Currently, you might find yourself hopping between the template file and the JS class to fully understand what's happening. For instance, in this example, to know what on range change does or to understand my class name or opacity value, you need to jump back and forth. That's time consuming and interrupts your workflow. Let's see how template expressions can streamline this. Notice how the error function is used right on the on input method or how the class name is a single template string. 
This new feature minimizes the need to switch between files, making your development process smoother. And there you go. It's the demo again. When I have the op range here uh, being changed, I change the opacity. I just uh, capture everything in real time without any uh, logic being added to the, my LWC class. Are you excited? We are launching a pilot program for template expressions in Winter 24. We'd love to have you on board. Your insights are crucial for refining this feature. So if you're interested, let's talk. What if we could extend the capabilities of LWC beyond the desktop browser and directly into a mobile device? Well, that's exactly what we are doing next. Lee Chattel will take the stage to show you how Nimbus plugins are opening up a whole new frontier by enabling native mobile capabilities in your LWCs. Alicia, the stage is yours. Thank you, Leo. Hi, everyone. I'm Alicia. I'll now speak about what's new in LWCs used in mobile and the experience builder. Let's start with mobile. As you all might be aware, you can use Nimbus plugins in your LWCs to access native mobile capabilities. Nimbus plugins stay dormant on desktop and mobile web and come to life in a mobile app. In the GIF here, I'm showing an LWC that uses the barcode scanner Nimbus plugin to get access to the phone's camera to scan barcodes. Customers are already using Nimbus plugins for various use cases, such as user location to tag few workers location, scanning barcodes for inventory, importing and exporting context to Salesforce, and syncing calendar events. And in Windows 24, we have three new plugins, OCR Document Scanner, NFC Tagging, and Biometric Service. Let's take a closer look at these new plugins. First, OCR Document Scanner. That's what we're showing in the GIF on the right. The app user can choose an image from their photo library or take a picture using their phone camera. The OCR model recognizes the text in the image and provides the value in the LWC. Several use cases for this plugin. One use case could be a clerk can scan driver's licenses, passports, or insurance documents, and he or she won't need to manually validate the documents or manually enter the data into Salesforce. Another use case could be for field service. The field agent can take a picture of a license plate using their phone app and be sure that it's the right vehicle to work on. The second new plugin is NFC tagging. This allows the mobile device to read, erase, and write to NFC tags. An example use case for this would be a field agent doing asset inventory checks can just tap NFC tags while making the whole process quicker and easier. And last but not least, biometric service. With this, your LWC can prompt users to confirm their identity at specific moments, defined by you, the developer. For example, let's say you're developing a mobile banking app. You can define in your LWC that biometric authentication is triggered when the user starts the process to transfer money. And that's what we have for mobile. Now, let's move on to the world of experience builder and site building. Here's the scenario. Have you ever created a component that your admin users find difficult to configure? And maybe you wish for a way to improve your component. Well, we now have something that can help, which is custom property editors and types. Let's get a quick overview of the feature before we jump into the demo. Here are three ways you can use custom property editors and types. First, you can use the new lightning types to define properties with more accurate semantic meaning. In addition to the new exist to the existing types, you can use the new lightning property types that I'm showing in the list here. Each of these types comes with a default property editor, so you won't need to create a custom editor unless you want to. Second, you can now create an LWC that acts as a custom property editor for your component. And here are some examples of property editors you could create for string field 
to make configuration more user-friendly. And third, you can now create a custom property type for easier code reuse. And when you create a custom property type, you can organize it into tabs or accordions. And now it's time for a demo. Let's look at it from the perspective of Donna, the developer. Hi, I'm Donna. I'm going to show you how I used custom property editors and types to improve my article component. Here's what the article component looked like originally. Right now, there's no way for me to restrict the date field. And so there's no way of preventing people from entering invalid values. The content field needs a lot of text and the small little field is difficult to type in. For text alignment, I would love for this to be more visually rich, like what's in the out of the box components. And lastly, I want to group border together and layout together so that it's clear that these are two different groups of properties. Now, let me go to VS Code to improve the component. I'm looking at the configuration file for my article component. For article date and article content, I'm going to change the type from string to more specific lightning types, like lightning date type and lightning multi-line text type. For the text alignment property, I've created an LWC custom property editor called alignment CPE. And here I'll specify that alignment CPE is the property editor. Finally, for the border and layout properties, I think I'm going to need this group of properties again. So I will create a custom property type. A custom property type is a new metadata type called experience property type bundle and it consists of a schema.json file and an optional design.json file. So going back to my article component, I will replace these properties with my reusable custom property type. All right, it's time to deploy. I can use the VS Code extensions or any other SFDX tools. And now let's look at the updated component. I now have a date picker, a large content area, a visually rich text alignment editor, and my borders and size properties are now grouped in tabs. Oh, and one more thing. I've also created a custom property editor that integrates with the OpenAI API. Users can type in a description and OpenAI will generate an image for them. If the user doesn't like that image, they can easily get another image. And that's it for the demo. Here's a last before and after comparison of the article component. To get started developing, download the quick start guide with the link here. And that's it for me. I'll now hand it back to Alice, who will share more about what's coming up in the LWC roadmap. We are very excited to bring these features and many more to LWC in the coming releases. Along with the few that we've highlighted in this session, we have several more features that are coming to you in Winter 24. GraphQL wire adapters is another highly anticipated feature that is coming to general availability in Winter 24. There is a dedicated session that goes into further detail on GraphQL roadmap, so I highly encourage you all to check that out if that's something you're keen to hear more about. We are also bringing native shadow components and some new SLDS global styling hooks to general availability in the same release in Winter 24, which we are excited about. And as we wrap up today, I wanted to know that this conversation doesn't end here. Catch up with our release readiness live session for Winter 24 and see what else we are discussing and what's new and what's coming to LWC. Thank you for being a part of this exciting journey toward a better, more efficient Salesforce development experience.